In working with a CNC router, occasionally the need will arise to reproduce a logo, sign, or some other unique graphic for which a vectorized version doesn't exist. In these cases, tracing utilities, such as those integrated into drawing or even router programs, can sometimes be useful. In other cases, though, these programs fall short of producing acceptable vector output. Although editing might be able to salvage some of these traces, in other instances, manual tracing is the best alternative. This video briefly examines a few different approaches to manual tracing. Prior to manual tracing, there are two steps I like to take. First is to apply a uniform transparency to the graphic, somewhere around 60 to 70 percent. This increases the contrast, making the drawn lines more visible. Second is to lock the graphic into place. This prevents inadvertent movement of the image during the tracing process. Sometimes the graphical elements of a design can be viewed as geometric forms. In these instances, it may be easier to create, arrange, and manipulate geometric objects as opposed to tracing an outline with various drawing tools. In this example, this decorative object can be thought of as a collection of rectangles and triangles. There's a long, narrow rectangle at the bottom, a shorter one near the top, and a wider rectangle, almost a square, connecting the two of those. Lastly, at the very top, there's a triangle. Notice that all of the shapes here slightly overlap one another. This is going to be important in a few steps when all the pieces are welded together. Now it's hard to tell, but it looks like the top point of the triangle is slightly radiused, so I'm going to use the fillet tool to handle that. Next, I'm going to select the last three shapes that were drawn, align them vertically, and then weld them together. The welded object is then duplicated twice, properly positioned, bottom aligned, and then welded to the long rectangle. When tracing a symmetrical object, such as this red shield, one common approach is to draw half of the object, mirror it, and then join the halves together. This is done partly for the sake of efficiency and partly because the objects are not always actually symmetrical, either because of inaccuracy in the original drawing or because of perspective-related distortion. The first step I'm going to take is to position a vertical guideline in the center of the shield. This is really the only guideline required, but I'm going to use a couple more. One at the left edge of the shield and a horizontal guideline near the transition from the straight line to a curve. Next, the polyline tool is used to draw the straight line portion of the shield. I didn't draw the scalloped corner manually because this program has a scallop tool, which I used instead. Now the three-point curve tool is used to draw the curve portion of the shield. The left half of the object is then duplicated, mirrored, and joined together. Unfortunately, many times the image being manually traced is neither symmetrical nor composed of geometric objects. One example would be this old hand-drawn script. In this case, the only real option is to grab an appropriate drawing tool and have at it. Because it's essentially composed of curves, the three-point curve tool would be a good choice for tracing. Click and hold to create the start point, drag to the desired location and release to establish the end point, then position and click to define the midpoint of the curve. Repeat this process as needed. Now from a distance, the trace doesn't look too bad. But if we zoom in a bit, it becomes obvious that the connections between curved segments aren't very smooth. Fortunately, these points of connection, or nodes, can be thoroughly edited. Selecting the node and adjusting the directional arrows is sometimes helpful. In other cases, smoothing the node will do the trick. In addition, although it's a bit counterintuitive, sometimes deleting the node completely can produce the desired result. Nodes can also be added anywhere along a vector and repositioned. Before a trace can be used within CNC router software, it must first be exported to a vector file format, such as DXF or EPS. Once imported into CNC software, it's ready for toolpathing. 
Although manual vector tracing isn't essential to CNC routing success, it can certainly be a handy skill to have. I hope this overview of approaches is helpful.